In today's video, I'm going to give you an updated version of the best Pokemon to use in Terra Raid battles so you can have an easier time collecting these items and getting through every single Terra Raid boss that you come up against. But before we get into today's video, please subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can always unsubscribe later if you would like to. Terra Raids are probably one of the most important aspects of the post game. They offer up high value item drops essential for shiny hunting, for leveling up your team and just adapting adapting Pokemon to exactly how you want them to be. And of course, all of these higher value items are going to be locked behind the higher star rated Terra Raids, meaning they're going to be more difficult, harder to beat, which in turn slows your progress down. Now, just after the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, we covered a number of options that would be good for you to use to give you a more optimal chance of beating these Terra Raids. And the main reason for doing an updated version of that original video is yes, you can have something like Iron Hands, which is great. The majority of dens you're going to be able to take it in against the terror bosses but there are going to be still a few sticking points where you're going to come across really awkward kind of terror type pokemon uh, that you're not going to be able to use iron hands for even as powerful as it is it's just going to have a really difficult time so you're going to have to look for alternative options and i think having a wider pool of pokemon makes going out and soloing these terror raids to farm all of these really good item drops a lot easier so that essentially is the reason for today's video so as you can see this is my raid mons box it gives you an idea of the kind of coverage you've got for going in against terror raids it's not to say that you need to have the same sort of courage but hopefully this video will give you a few ideas where you can broaden the range of terror raid dens you'll be able to easily beat and make things a lot quicker for you in game let me just move my camera here now i am going to start off with iron hands and yes it's been done it's been saturated because everyone's done it everyone talks about it everyone knows about it but i'm going to give you my personal most optimal set for iron hands so if we take a look here i think fighting type is probably the more optimal typing on it although the electric type is nice and if you've got two iron hands have one fighting one electric it will just give you more options against more terror raid dens the ev spread for iron hands is very simple max hp max attack we've got the move set of belly drum electric terrain thunder punch and drain punch so primarily all you're really going to need to do is rely on drain punch it is its strongest attack you're going to utilize it when you terrestrialize it's a form of recovery and the other two options here electric terrain means you can set the electric terrain up it's not only going to boost your electric type thunder punch but it's also going to protect you from being put to sleep in primarily the reason why it's there on this set because it gives you that status immunity against sleep conditions which can really slow down your progress in a raid the item makes sense because there's not really too much else that you would need on iron hands you could go for maybe a lumberry if you want if you're worried about burns but you do have that cheer facility as well that you can utilize citrus berry just gives you that instant boost of hp back as soon as you do set up your belly drum meaning that you can stick around for that next turn once you've got that plus six attack to get that drain punch off and then recover your health nice and easy iron hands is a great pokemon and another pokemon alternative to iron hands that i would like to suggest which i've been using quite a bit is hariyama which is kind of like its normal form its base form hariyama great pokemon it doesn't have as high base stats of course as iron hands it is a pure fighting type we have the terror type fighting on it we've got the guts ability on hariyama and one of the reasons why i do like hariyama a lot is because we can utilize the guts ability it gives you 1.5 attack boost as soon as you are affected by a status condition like burn like poison sleep freeze you know those sort of things paralysis as soon as you get that status condition then the goods ability boosts we give it the flame orb so after that first turn the flame orb will burn hariyama on, on purpose to get that guts boost but it not only gives you the attack boost it gives you immunity to any other status conditions and that's one of the big bonuses about this flame orb and the guts ability and why i like hariyama so much it plays exactly the same as iron fists pretty much same ev spread max hp max attack uh, with an adamant nature uh, with that flame orb as its item and then the move set belly drum we've given knockoff for coverage earthquake as well for another form of coverage and then drain punch which is primarily going to be its main form of attack if you haven't got access to iron hands if you're a scarlet player and you haven't got a way to get iron hands this is a very good substitute for that pokemon and still something that i use even though i've got iron hands i do sometimes use hariyama as an alternative because i know how useful 
the immunity to status conditions can be in these battles. So Hariyama sometimes falls a little bit more in favor and it's also a nice option to have both of them in your party. The next Pokemon, we're gonna do an updated version of for Azumarill and again, it is a bit saturated, but again, it's worth talking about. Shell Bell is probably the most optimal item for it, especially because you are playing off that Belly Drum set. Misty Terrain, a little bit like the electric terrain that we've got on Iron Hands. Misty Terrain prevents any status conditions from affecting you for five turns as long as that terrain is active on the field. So it's a really nice thing to stop sleep burn in particular that can slow you down. We've got Belly Drum there. It's obvious play for uh, Azumarill. So we get that off turn one and then we use a combination of either Aqua Jet if we need some quick recovery HP, which is a priority move, or play rough to do some absolutely disgusting damage because it is boosted again by that huge power ability that we've got on it here. So Azumarill, we've got a fairy type Azumarill and we do have the alternative. So we've got a water type Azumarill as well as an option that we do uh, sometimes rely on rather than going down the fairy terror type we've got a water terror type azumarill that is a slightly different with just aqua de liquidation as it moves with player off it's kind of like a backup there but the ev spread on both of them is exactly the same max hp max attack a uh, huge power as the ability and shell bell is the item now the next Pokemon I'm going to talk about is something I don't see many people talking about, but Volcarona is an absolute beast in raid battles. I do love it a lot and it kind of fulfills a lot of those roles that I was talking about at the start of the video. Having a means of recovery in Morning Sun means that you've got a line of recovery, you can recover 50% of your health uh, whenever you want. Um, weather dependent of course uh, we've got quiver dance as well which is just an incredible move which boosts your special attack special defense and speed by one stage every time you use it so you're boosting a lot of stats in kind of one move which is always really worthwhile then we've got the attacker moves of bug buzz and heat wave we've got the terror type fire on the volcarona and the covered cloak as its item choice now the item choice is super flexible with volcarona flame body is its ability as well which is nice for opponents that do use contact moves they're going to have a 30 percent chance every time they do land a contact move of getting burned which is always really useful but volcarona the premise of it pretty much is get it out on the field against something that's weak to the fire typing or the bug typing and then just get set your quiver dances up morning sun when required and then just launch off your big heat wave or bug buzz attacks ev spread on it is going to be max hp max special attack and we have a modest nature on it just to further boost its special attack as well so that is volcarona but definitely something i would recommend you try out in your terror raids next pokemon i'm going to talk about is one of my all-time favorites and that is a bomber snow i love a bomber snow is a grass and ice type we're going to have the terror type of grass on this one We've got the ability snow warning. So it throws up a hailstorm onto the field as soon as you enter the battle. We've got Aurora Veil there, which gives you essentially a light screen and a reflect at the same time. And you can use this as long as the hail is on the field. So that is something you probably want to use turn one. And then we are using a little bit of a different Abomber Snow here. We've got an adamant nature on it. We've got an EV spread of HP, max HP, max attack here and we're playing off sword stance which boosts your attack stat twice every time you use it and then we're using the moves ice spinner and sea bomb to play off that physical attack boosting um, option that we've got with sword stance the item choice is shell bell because as you notice we haven't really got a means of recovery on a bomber snow so it's always nice to be able to have a way to recover health and keep it on the field for as long as possible but a bomber snow is definitely one of those pokemon that fills in a gap against those really awkward pokemon that you think what can i bring against this one it's a grass type that's a, a water terror type a bomber snow is a perfect pokemon to bring against this because it's going to resist all of those attacks that they can potentially throw out at you and you can do big damage in return as well so it's a really nice option ticks the boxes for everything that we need it can recover and it has got boosting attacks as well and it's um it does cover a different terror type as well that we haven't got on the team at the minute now the other pokemon we have done specific video on annihilate i think annihilate is a brilliant pokemon and it can go up against pretty much most things but there are certain things that it is going to struggle against but essentially annihilate is a brilliant pokemon to train up if you want to check out the specific video on annihilate the build and how to get one and things like that i will link it up above in the top right hand corner but essentially 
This is the Annihilate, just in a nutshell here. Flutterman is another one we used a lot in those Charizard raids uh, and was particularly very, very strong. Probably the most reliable member of the, uh, the team that I used against Charizard. Never really had a problem with Charizard after that. There's a Ghost Fairy type, Fairy Terra type on it. Calm Mind Fake Tears, really great combination. And you've got the Draining Kiss as well, which gives you that line of recovery if you need it once you've set up those Calm Minds. Fake Tears laws the special defense of opponents by two stages every time you use it. So you can weaken your opponent as well as kind of boosting your own attacks to kind of stack everything to just do ridiculous damage. EV spread, max HP, max special attack, nothing really too outstanding there. The only drawback with Flutterman is it is very weak on the defense defensive side so its defense is pretty poor its HP is not the best either so it's not going to be able to take a bunch of attacks but if your opponent is primarily a special type attacker you're going to be in a pretty good position as long as they're not like a steel special type attacker so uh, float them in a nice option as a fairy type to take into most terror raids. Next option is Crocodile. You're gonna come across terror raids that have a, a electric terror type and they're gonna be a little bit awkward. So I do feel like a ground type is essential in your coverage that you have in your terror team party, you know? Um, and Crocodile feels like one of the best ground type options that we do have in Scarlet and Violet at the moment. We've given it the Shell Bell, we've given it the terror type ground, a move set of Taunt, Bulk Up, Power Trip and Earthquake. So Bulk Up, boosts attack and defense by one stage every time you use it. Power Trip is a little bit like stored power. So the more uh, boosts that you've got to your stats, the higher base power Power Trip gets. Taunt shuts down any sort of setup from the opponent and also status conditions that you can throw onto you. You've got Intimidate as the ability here. Now another Pokemon that I do really like, I don't tend to use too often, but there is certain situations where it is very useful. Ice is generally not a very strong type, but it is useful in certain situations, particularly against dragon types and things like that. It can be quite useful. But the water typing here is a nice option to kind of fall back on as well as another water type, terra type option. Have out outside of just having a water type um, that can take advantage of boosting themselves up with an attack like Belly Drum that we're relying on here, but having both those stabs in the ice and the water as well, once you've terrestrialized, of course. Uh, ability, we went for sheer force. Uh, it gives you an extra a boost on attacks, but obviously loses the secondary effects to those, which doesn't really matter too much in most terror raids, especially with the moves that we're using anyway. EV spread, max HP, max attack. You get the theme of this one. And the Shell Bell is pretty essential on this Titan because it hasn't really got a way of recovery outside of using that Shell Bell with the big damage that you're doing from after the Belly Drum. We've got uh, Adamant Nature on it um, and that is pretty much the Titan, but a really nice option and a good Belly Drum user overall as well. It's got decent bulk as well. You can see its defenses aren't amazing, but it's got a huge HP stat, which really helps it out in these terror raid battles. Next option is Hydreigon. I love Hydreigon so much. One of my all time favorite Pokemon. It has a great ability in Levitate, immune to all ground type attacks. So just an, an additional like immunity really on top of the immunities that it's already got through its dragon type and its dark type. And we went for the dark terror type to give you a really strong dark type option. Shell Bell because it's got literally outside of rest, no option for recovery on this Pokemon, unfortunately. So the whole premise of this Hydreigon is you're probably going to be more susceptible to getting hit on the physical side with Hydreigon. So the Reflect is a really nice option against those particular Pokemon. It just gives you a little bit of stability against physical type of threats that can come out of you. And primarily, you're just going to want a nasty plot, boosting your special attack up twice per turn you use it, and then just launch Dark Pulses off, or Dragon Pulses, whichever you prefer. But primarily, you're going to want to use the Dark Pulse because you're playing off that Dark Terror type when you can terrestrialize in battle, and the Shell Bell will help you recover throughout. But High Dragon's a really nice option to have in any team, I think, just is something that might just sit in your box and you will like, occasionally use it. But it is a good option and a very strong Pokemon nonetheless. Next up is Slowbro. Now we did cover a little bit of Slowbro in our Cinderace preparation video, but this is a slightly different Slowbro. This has got the Terra Water type rather than the Terra Psychic type. We've got the item Mystic Water here um, and the moveset's pretty similar with Slack Off Belly Drum. Zen Headbutt and Liquidation. So the, the whole premise is Belly Drum turn one, then slack off if you need to, or you can just launch attacks off with the Zen Headbutt and Liquidation. So on tempo as the ability because it stops you being confused, which is pretty big in most Terror Raid 
uh, battles if that is an issue. Uh, EV spread is going to be HP and max attack. And that is pretty much everything. The Mystic Water doesn't essentially need to be there. You could give it something like Leftovers, Covid Cloak. There are a number of different options, but I just felt like giving it a bit extra power for those liquidations once you are set up will definitely help out the slow bro with an adamant nature as well, just to mention that. Now, a little like the Obama Snow, having a grass terra type on your team just to kind of cover that typing in particular is essential. I think the other essential typing is going to be an electric type on your team. And I feel like Rotom fits the bill perfectly here because it gives you not only an option of having a secondary stab attack in the Hydro Pump, but you've got a very reliable way to set up this Pokemon with Nasty Plot. The Reflect helps boost that defense stat. And then you've got the main attacking moves are going to be Hydro Pump, which you're probably not going to be using that much, but it does give you a secondary attack if you need it. And then Thunderbolt going to be your main attacking option. We've got the EV spread max HP, max special attack on here. The Levitate is, as we know, a very useful option on Rotom because it's just immune to ground type and it takes away that whole weakness that it's got through its electric type. So essentially when you terrestrialize, you're going to have no weaknesses. Held item is leftovers just to give you a line of recovery. Now, this might be the big problem with Rotom and something like the Shell Bell might feel a little bit more solid on Rotom so you can get a bit more health recovery when you are attacking rather than just relying on the leftovers. But once you are set up with Rotom, you're probably going to rely a little bit more on the cheer function than you are with some of the other options here. But I do feel like Rotom in particular against those Corviknights, it can be a bit awkward to take down sometimes in particular when they've got either really awkward Terra Typings to kind of back them up. Rotom is essentially a very good option against the majority of those. Unlike Rotom Wash, we have a Rotom Heat. It's pretty similar in all respects, Rotom Heat, but just got the Fire Terra typing, so it gives you another Fire Terra type. It got the leftovers again, pretty similar move set as well, just relying on overheat rather than having a electric type stab as well here, because you're predominantly, if you're taking it in against something in a Terra Raid battle, you're probably only going to really be wanting those Fire type attacks. Overheat, not the best when you're not Terrestrial because you are going to have to rely on it quite heavily. It does reduce your special attack by two stages every time you use it. So you're going to have to be kind of getting your nasty plots boosted out, maxed out after three turns and then kind of topping them up after every overheat, which can be a little bit annoying until you can terrestrialize and then you can rely a little bit more on that Terra Blast. But all in all, a very good option nonetheless. Skeledurge is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon, and I feel like a really solid Pokemon, underrated Pokemon, but something that's not going to be too flashy that is going to go up against those really awkward Terra Raid Pokemon where you can just slow the game down, take a bunch of hits, and just really eke out the battle in a kind of a slow fashion where Skeledurge isn't setting up very quickly and it isn't really getting KO'd quickly either, you know? I give the move set of Slack Off. That is an egg move, so you'll have to teach it that through Mirror Herb and things like that, uh, those options. Uh, Fire Spin, uh, I did have Curse on there, tested it, not that great. Fire Spin's another alternative option. You could go Yawn there as well. And the main attacking moves are gonna be Shadow Ball and Torch Song, of course. Torch Song, the kind of the main attacking option here because every time you use it, it boosts your special attack. So every turn that you use it, you're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And that's what I mean about being a bit of a, a kind of a slow starter in most games until it is really maxed out and it's doing some huge damage, especially when you are terrestrialized. Now, the other big thing about Skeledurge and why I say it's a kind of a just a wearing down sort of Pokemon you can bring to a lot of different Terra Raids is the ability unaware. Now, a lot of Terra bosses are going to be able to set up in front of you and become quite threatening quite quickly. Now, with the ability unaware, it ignores all of these stat boosts that your opponents are going to do. So you're not going to really worry about if your opponent is swords dancing in front of you or bulking up or calm minding or whatever. None of those boosts are going to affect anything that you do in the battle, which makes Skeledurge, in my opinion, one of the best Pokemon to have just in the backup it's not going to be something you bring to every battle it's not going to be your annihilate it's not going to be your iron hands it is going to be something that you do rely on in the odd occasion and you're going to be so thankful for having it um like i said that third option of a fire spin you can play around with things on it i didn't really feel like i needed an item here so i've been trying out the bind and band which just increases the damage every turn of the residual damage from fire spin so normally it would be like an eighth of health which you have to factor in against the HP number of the actual Terra Raid boss, which is multiplied. 
So you're not doing that much each turn with the residual damage, but it does increase that slightly from one eighth to one sixth in normal terms in um, when you use any sort of binding move, which Fire Spin falls into. EV spread is very, very straightforward. I'm sure you can guess max HP, max special attack, and it is an, a modest nature as well on the Skeleger, just in case you're wondering. But I, essentially, I think the sticking points for this are gonna be that unaware ability, which is its hidden ability, slack off, shadow ball, torch song, Outside of that, you've got a pretty open space to do what you want with that. Next Pokemon is Grimmsnarl. Now, a lot of you will probably see Grimmsnarl as a supporting Pokemon. And yes, it is a great supporting Pokemon, no doubt about it. It has the Prankster ability, so it has uh, the ability to use non-damaging attacks with a boosted priority, meaning it always go first. Now, this is a slightly different Grimmsnarl, and I built this Grimmsnarl specifically to go up against Charizard, uh, seven-star Charizard raids, and it did surprisingly well against them. I took down a number of Charizards solo with this Grimmsnarl, and I do really like it. Primarily, I built this to take on the six-star Annihilates because a lot of those can be really difficult and uh, pretty annoying to deal with and the dark and fairy type really gives you a good advantage against the majority of annihilate different variations that you're going to see in those terror raids so we've got the fairy terror type for this grim snarl shell bell giving you the option of recovery uh, and the move set is going to be bulk up light screen spirit break and play rough so primarily you're going to start off with the light screen or a bulk up depending on what the situation is and then you're going to just, after you've set up, you're going to just hit Spirit Breaks, which reduces your opponent's special attack stat every time it hits, which is really nice. And it also will recover you because of the Shell Bell option there. And we've got Play Rough as well, which is just another option, a bit of a stronger attack, although not as reliable accuracy wise, to just play on its terror type when you do get around to terrestrialize. And it's pretty straightforward, to be honest. Bulk up, light screen if you need to, spirit break there to just do consistent damage and even if your opponent's got the shield up you're still going to be able to reduce that special attack stat every turn whereas things like fake tears and other status condition moves would fail in those situations because the shield's up but because this is an actual attacking move and it's a secondary effect and still weakens your opponent's Pokemon so a really nice option and something for you just to think about. Uh, even if you've been using Grimmsnarl in a more supportive role to support your friends in online terror raids, uh, Grimmsnarl can play a multitude of different roles, and this is definitely one of them. Next up, we've got King Gambit. We've went for an animate nature, a HP, and attack maxed out EV wise. Moveset Sword Stance, Iron Defense, Photo Cleave, and Sucker Punch are its options. We've got the Dark Terror Typing as the Terror Type on it, and Defiant is its ability. So anytime your stats are lowered, you're going to get an attack boost which really helps out and cuts down the turns that you're going to need to sword stance so this is just a really nice option i think good solid dark type you could obviously go for a steel type if you wanted and just change around some of those attacker moves now again we covered armor rouge is an option in our preparation for cinderish i feel like that is a very good option another one is serilege and um, both of these pokemon are good in their own rights obviously one more a special attacker in the armor rouge whereas serilege is more of a physical attacker we very similar pokemon in a lot of ways bulk up is the option on serilege we've went for an adam in nature there max attack and hp evs item of choice you could go covert cloak you could go a boosting item on it for boosting fire type attacks or ghost type attack it's entirely up to yourself or whatever it feels like it's one of those pokemon that's very flexible with its item choices here bulk up obviously is to boost its attack its defense and then light screen gives you that little bit more stability in special defense which is something you can't boost when you are using bulk up um, and then the the moves bitter blade does give you a line of recovery there when you use it against opponents and shadow claw gives you a ghost stab attack and uh, we've got a ghost terror type on it as well which just gives us a bit of a ghost terror type option if we need to against certain terror bosses and the last one that i'm going to mention today is goldingo and again it's the one that's saturated the one everyone knows about but if you don't know about it i'm just going to cover my favorite set personally on goldingo and you could go with a, a bunch of different options on it. You could go for a ghost terror type if you would like. I think that's still super optimal and a really nice option as well. There's the hex set that we covered 
previously on the video uh, when we originally did our first Goldingo uh, coverage. And uh, I still would stand by that Goldingo build as being one of the probably most reliable ones as well. But I just needed it. I wanted to try out the steel typing. So we've given it the steel terror type. We've given it the metal code to give it a boost to its steel type attacks. And the moveset of recovery, nasty plot, metal sound, which in metal sound reduces the special defense of your opponent. So you're kind of stacking the damage that you're able to do in flash cannon. You can go with make it rain. It's got lower PP and it will reduce your special attack every time you use use it so for just more reliability more consistency flash cannon i feel is just as good an option uh, but if you want a little bit more power then make it rain is just as good the ability good as gold as well is incredible because it gives you immunity to kind of status conditions modest nature on this goldingo and max hp max special attack that is all you're going to need with this one and uh, definitely a pokemon i would suggest you go out and get because it is just so reliable but that is all of the pokemon that i wanted to cover in today's video and hopefully it gives you a few more options and ideas for how to build some of your own pokemon to take into terror raids to easier do them in these games. If you've got your own builds, do drop them in the comments down below. I would love to read them and see what you've been using most successfully in your games. But if you have found today's video useful, please drop a like. Do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any further Pokemon Scholar and Violet content. And I will see you in another video very soon, friends. So thank you so much for your time. Take care and bye-bye.